shouldn't, and it doesn't. He said it should. He said your house should smell like dogs. No. But it doesn't. That's if you let them go to the bathroom everywhere in your house. Yeah, like Essie. Yeah. She told me that, one thing she told me, she said, you know, I'm worried, real worried about my mind. You know, Grizzly died. Yeah. Okay, um, Opie. She mm -hmm. said, I, I, I couldn't stay up. I, w I went to bed at 9 o'clock. That would have been Friday night. She tells me how lonely she gets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that puzzles me. Because Kathy's running in there all the time, but only Kathy. Yeah. And But she said, um, I went to bed. I couldn't stay up past 9, and I went to bed, and o Opie woke me up barking. I didn't look at the clock and went in the kitchen and made me some coffee and sat down to drink it and the clock struck 12. Hmm. Well. Well, that's all right. So, Opie just got his time off. You know what? I, I said that dog, that they're going to kill her mm -hmm. if he don't soon die. Yeah. She makes them the lord of the house. Mm-hmm. They run everything. <laughs> and that's, I just told, I said, eh? I just couldn't live like that. Mm. No? And Charlotte, oh. I couldn't. Uh, I, I couldn't do that. I, I really would be. She has strong stamina. Mm. I'd be in the hospital. No? Well, I wonder if she went back to bed. Said she did. Yeah. I, I, you know, all her life, all she did was catnap. The, the, all of them, uh, all those children, they had no... You know, Jerry never did sleep. Hmm. And it, it was her routine. And I'm afraid that Brandy's raising, and Craig's raising another one hmm. with her hours. Yeah. Well. You know, Kaylee's going to be tuned to Brandy's hours. Yeah. Which is completely off from everybody else's. Well, y'all, isn't it terrible about those nightclubs? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fires. Stampedes and nobody can get out. Well, I think they'll stop all the pyrotechnics yeah, all over the country. Whatever that is, pyrotechnics, but fireworks. I, I could have slapped the white. What white? What was his name? What, what's the name of the band? Great White. Great White could have slapped him in the face, making out he had permission from everybody. Yeah, to do it and caught everything on fire. Well, they've started. Uh, I saw on the news here they are going around at night and checking all the nightclubs here. They, they are here. And they're going at night at the peak. Mm -hmm. When they're crowded. Uh -huh. And they're opening up doors and they're, they're uh, the fire people. Yes. Yeah, the fire departments are doing it. Not the owners because it don't seem like that one in Chicago had been ordered to shut down the year before. But nobody follows up. No. You see what I'm saying? He just kept going. Well, well, what happened to, to Ed? And I know he made it back as we were heading out of town. You know, he had that wreck while we were there. Ed? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. That has come as near... Well, I had more news than I thought I had. <laughs> that has come as near wiping them that man out. I have never. I said, living through that with him over here discussing it and calling me on the phone is about kill me. Mm. He called you. Mark, you know you don't mess with an insurance company. Okay, what happened? He, uh, he told me that about how that truck was just completely totaled. He, he rented a car. Uh, they furnished the car, you know. I'm sure okay. the insurance company paid for it. He drove home. He was uh, bickering back and forth with the insurance company, but he goes down here to his friend Dennis's, who has a, a, a garage at Greenwood, They've been friends ever since way before Kathy. Anyway, Dennis said, you know, I'd love to have that truck if I could get it for seven or $800. And how do you know that it's totaled? All right. So Dennis told him, said, I will put a hook on my, a trailer on my truck. We'll take that car and uh, we'll go up there and see. And if I if if I can get that for seven or eight hundred dollars, I'll bring it back. Well, he approached the insurance company about that, and 
And he said, could he turn the car in here? Well, I don't know what his hurry was because it wasn't out of his pocket, you know. And they said, when you turn that in, sir, uh, that's it. He said, I couldn't get another one up there if I needed it. No. So he, then, he, then he called and asked how much that his friend could buy that truck for, which I, I thought was a mistake. Mm -hmm. So they said $2,000. Well, Dennis didn't want it. Mm. And uh, Ed did go back up there. See, Listen to this. He come over here nearly every day and talked to me about what to do, and he didn't want to wait that long on his insurance check, and he had to get transportation, on, and he just believed he'd get a, a refinance his house, which I thought was a terrible move. Mm -hmm go ahead and pay for his truck and then when the truck money come in put it on there which all of this he was t t t telling me see while he tried to decide so finally see he got a truck Thursday it's a black GMC he said he never would he tried everywhere to find a truck just like that but Kathy wanted him to take a film take a camera up there and she got him a little disposable camera to make pictures of that truck. Mm. And he said he was awestruck at how he'd come out of that alive. Mm. He said on the passenger side, and he's trying to find something that caused it. So he said on the passenger side, on the wheel, or on the, no, on the driver's side, the back tire was flat. And he thinks that he had a flat, but y'all know what I think? I think Ed went to sleep. Mm. Mm -hmm. He didn't say anything about it the first time. Well, he was in shock. He couldn't. Well, he, he's been in shock. He I wasn't he comprehending died. everything he saw up there the first time. No, but I, I, I really, and Laird, I was telling him about it, and he said Ed went to sleep. So. Yeah kind of chuckled you know that right? you, you you can't be almighty and it, because he's driven that may it's 66 mm. because he's driven that before the, oh and the poor fella came back on the bus 17 and a half hours ah. mm. From the second time up there? Yeah, I mean. he went and turned the car in and come back on the bus. Mm -hmm. And all of it just was heartbreaking sounding to me. I, mm -hmm. I never saw any such finagling over one thing. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem like anything simple anymore. No, no. And he said that insurance company was so crude. Well, I'll tell you. Um, these insurance companies can cut you off so fast mm -hmm. till I don't meddle them unless I had a real good reason to. Yeah. And I don't think I'd go to asking them to let me buy back the old vehicle and all that. No. <laughs> no, that was the first mistake. That was, and Mark, a bad one. Well, and then to let them know that, that he knew that fella, or they were friends, that was... Uh, friends. So that, on the insurance side, that probably... It thought they were trying to do a scam or something. Yeah, it didn't look good. <laughs> no. But now that's uh, their opinion. I mean, everybody, anybody's smarter than I am, but I just know you keep a low key and you don't tell everything you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, uh, now, I mean, I've loaded y'all down. No, it just started raining again here. And I have got to go to the library to run copies of what I was doing when y'all called is filling out papers. My Lord, it's a stack on Savannah, you know, mm. real, real new in her Medicaid. Yeah. Free, and I don't make a mistake. Mm. But I've got to send uh, copies of her last few months bank statements. Mm. <coughs> so I'm going down there and try to get that. It's due the 24th and I'm messing around here. You know, I, I started filling it out the 14th, y'all. Yeah. So, 
Well, if anybody can do it, you can. Must have been Valentine's Day. I think that's when I started. I said, I'll whip through this. <laughs> and it's the most absurd mm. question. Well. But anyway, I'll do the best I can. And if they turn it down, then I'll go to the Fifth City. <laughs> well, we just wanted to check on you this well, morning. Well, you got an earful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And Lady said, uh, Mary Ellen, you know, is coming here to live. Mm -hmm. She's building her a condo or a townhouse or whatever. Boy, she and Debbie are uh, into it. Debbie? Her daughter. Uh, Mary Ellen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the builder called Debbie. The builder here uh -huh. called Debbie and talked to her about the house. And Mary Ellen asked him why, and he told. She told the the builder said, "Well, she said she was responsible for your business." Mm -mm. So she hit the fan. I think they want her money. Yeah. I I guess they hate to see it go like that. I believe mm -hmm. that she was asking three hundred thousand for that place. But I wouldn't want to sit back there all year no. by myself. Mm -mm. I think it's a big shot with Austin Bridge. It's fine. Anyway, now what more news do I have? This plenty goes on, I'll tell y'all. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure as and many. I had a wreck. Oh, somebody ran into her mm. um, Thursday afternoon. And, but she wasn't hurt. Um, hit her in the driver's side. Somebody mm -hmm. run a way down here in the country, but he would run a stop sign. Yeah. Well. But she came out good, nothing broken. Betty oh. said she'd been crying for two weeks. I don't know why. Sounds like she needs something for her nerves. Yeah. Uh, and who was it? Lady or Anna? Been crying. Y'all hear my y'all hear my hawks, crows. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I do. Yeah. They want me to come out there and feed them. <laughs> well, tell everybody we said hi. I and... sure will, honey. And I, y'all know how much I love you. Oh, we love you. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I know after I hang up, there'll be a bunch of stuff I didn't tell y'all. <laughs> I don't tell you. <laughs> yeah, I was. I hope Brandy will call I'll that tell, lady. I'll tell her that you asked. Her. She was she following up on that. I figure she's done making a move. But I kept that here because they are flaky. Now, yeah, I would not put that in Craig's hand. No, I waited till she came. And I said, this Charlotte left you this. She grabbed it, like I said, the mm -hmm. $100 bills. Read it. Yeah. Well. She's desperately afraid that, that the mother will say she don't want to see her. Right. Right. But she doesn't know. She doesn't know. Mm-hmm. She, she'll say, if she don't want to see me, that's all right. Well, it's not. Yeah. You know. I can tell that that's her fear. So. Well, the only way to find out is to go forward. Way, you know what? Go through it. That's right. And then deal with it. That's right. She may get a pleasant surprise. Billy Bob did with her dad, you know. Yeah. She found him. So, well, I'll keep checking back. Well, listen. Y'all be careful. Take care. Oh, if I knew her information, I might could try to check. Well, then I'll try to, I'll, I'll tell you what, I haven't followed up on that. When I handed her that, see, I released it. Uh -huh. I'll just find out. She said she knew the hospital and... Well, did she, am I dreaming or did she say it when she thought Barksdale? I, I did don't I dream remember. that? I don't know. But she never did tell me, so I don't know. Well, I think it was local. 
She said it was local, and she knows the hospital. Well, if I had all her information, maybe I could see what I could find out. It's like a dream, or it may have been mm-hmm. Billy Bob that said Barksdale. I don't but know. It's just like a dream, but I know it's local. But if you can get uh, Brandy's yes. information, yeah. date of birth and the hospital. I'll get back on that. That is more okay. pleasant than what I'm all I'm dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad Ed's got his truck. He said he'd be over here to show it to me. Mm. He said Friday, but you know it never slowed down. I said I hope he don't come today. Because mm. I can't stand out there in the rain. No. Oh, yeah. And I believe that all of that together, like, wiped it out. Mm. Well. He sounds like he still don't know what he's uh, talking about. Yeah. What about? It frightened him. If he went to sleep, that will frighten him more. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe that would frighten me more than sliding on ice. Yeah. Now he wants to say that he had a flat tire oh. that caused it. Well, let him say it. That's right. Larry said, hmm, mm-hmm. he didn't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Larry. What were you going to ask, Mark? What about Alan's foot? Did that clear oh, up? Oh, got well, son. And uh, he, you know, he was off over a week. But once in a while, he'll break out with a rash on the leg, not even the same place. And the doctor tells him that it's, it was, she believes it was a, a reaction to all that medication. Mm. But. He said, I believe she needs to send me to a dermatologist. And I said, yeah. Alan, you need you have needed a dermatologist all of your life. Mm. Don't y'all remember how he couldn't get out, he couldn't roll in the grass, he couldn't do anything other children could? No. And uh, so, poor fellow, poor boy. Yeah, he allergist or something. While he has good insurance? Yeah. Uh, let him... And he said, I think that's what Dr. Landry's going to do because she don't understand the rash. Yeah. But she didn't understand the feet either, so I don't know what foot either, so I don't know what kind of doctor. Yeah. Supposed to be real good. Well, but, but I... He, he's better, and uh, did somebody... Did I tell you all what Tuesday told me the other night, though, that breaks my heart? Mm-mm. Uh, she said, Alan, just out of a clear blue sky, said... You know, I, all I have is a wasted life. Hmm. Said, if anything happens to mom, I've got nobody. And y'all don't know hmm. how that hurt me. I'm telling you, it's about to kill me. Well, but it's not. Uh, but it's not wasted. Laird said uh, he come him and the heart. He spent the night with Hardy. Oh, let me tell you this. He said, you know. I go over all the time and spend the night with Hardy, and he said, we're closer than we've ever been in our life. Mm-hmm. He said, we sit o- he's going over there to eat. <laughs> he said, we sit over there and watch him old Western movies with Randolph Scott and uh, Joel McCrae and all them, and he said, we have the best time. Mm-hmm. Well, the other day, a lady told me that the two of them went to see Mary, Mary Ellen. You know, that's not far from there. Oh. And uh, how she enjoyed them. With other evening when he come here, he said, "You know that Alan is wasting his life." Who said that? That man is wasting his life, Laird. Mm. He saw, and I thought, "Well, what is this?" He he saw the paintings, the two paintings that uh, Marilyn Junior had Alan do. Mm-hmm. He said he ought not be working; mm-hmm. he ought to be painting. Yeah. I said, "Well, that's what Jane and me wanted so much." Yeah. I said, "We we always thought if we was wealthy, we'd tell him to give his notice that day." Yeah. He said he could make a good living. Yeah, he could. <clears throat> well, I said, well, we don't know how to market. Yeah. That's... You got to have the right, just like in music. If mm-hmm. you don't have the right connections, you uh, you, don't, you don't do it. That's right. Well, he's had some shows, hasn't he? Yeah, and he could more if he had somebody speaking for him. And that's where I feel like I've failed him. I said, instead of being out selling Islam's book, which made him a fortune, I should have been out selling Alan's art. I'm, I'm still trying to think of a way. Uh, well. He told me when, if, if you found, a, Alan did, if you found a, 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 a gallery, mm-hmm. they want those pictures framed, and that would mean uh, four or five hundred dollars each painting, and you'd have to have a good capital outlay to even start it. Oh, I don't know. I'll ask. Uh... Well, that's when you find a sponsor. 
somebody who is a great fan of your work and would be willing to well, finance. Yeah, I, I the, had a friend uh, sold Alan uh, about three thousand dollars worth his dad in those two paintings. Mm. That man was paying any. He, he'd always had a hundred dollars. He thought that, that went in that pharmaceutical building. Up, that was Hank's friend, and Hank will tell me, you know, that that friend asked about Alan. <clears throat> but his dad, um, he and I talked on the phone, and he was so they were huge, you could hardly get them in a house. Mm. He saw something in Florida that he wanted, and he talked to Alan and. They, they, uh, even his secretary and him said they were just awestruck. Mm. It was close up of flowers. But mm. uh, we've got pictures here. We just hadn't showed you. Anyway, uh, that was a one real, real good outlet. Yeah. Well, maybe any exposure that he could get. Mm -hmm. Well, then the internet's another one. He could. Uh, get a website going and have samples of his pictures on there. Yeah, he sure can. And that's available for anybody in the world to look at. But, if I, but right now, if I could just turn my attention to helping him, I feel like it's time. Yeah. You know, I'm going to try to come up with something. But the Internet is the best exposure you can get. And all he'd have to do is scan the pictures of the paintings and put them on there for sale or whatever and maybe and then have business cards or flyers or something he, with he that will, he'll be over here tonight so we're going to discuss it with that uh, address on there and then if he meets somebody that's interested or whatnot, he hand them that card and then when they get to their computer they can go look it up and, and see all of his work thank you Mark you're uh it takes, it takes a village. Mm-hmm. That's the reason I don't mind reaching out and asking people, yeah. uh, you know, what's your ideas? Because that's great. That's a good one. Old Prissy got on and found uh, the old Soggy Bottom, original old Soggy Bottom movie. Yeah. And who would have thought it? She ordered, and that's what she gave her folks for Christmas. Really? Yeah. She gave her mama one and her brother one. That's all the family she's got. She don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, we see our neighbor out walking the yard, so we, I'm going to go see what he's wanting. Walking your yard? Well, the ditch in between us. Oh, I guess he's looking to hope y'all saved. He's making sure it's going to drain out, I guess. Yeah, well, my neighbor was mad last night. And he come down here at 9 o'clock and brought pizza, and I'd already eaten. She's so afraid that I said, I'd call you, Angela. She said, you would not. I'd just see you float by. <laughs> <laughs> She just had a tummy tuck, and I told her husband, I said, tell, he brought me supper one night. So I said, tell Angela, that, Angela, I'm totally jealous that I was the one that needed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you ever tell the post office to bring your mail up to your house? <clears throat> no. And I tell you, something's going on that me and Pat don't like. Oh, but by the way, Liddy brought out here to show me that she's made the prettiest baby quilt for her. Maggie. Oh. Oh, uh, it is simply beautiful. Mm. Wow. And uh, she was going to mail it to Eva Carolyn. Mm. Well. But no, uh, Mark and uh, something else that he's doing, the substitute is in a white pickup, not marked. My lady, with their old red car and the light flashing at the top, uh -huh. must be something wrong with her. But he has left three packages out on that. Uh, between those two mailboxes. Just sitting on the ground? It, no. You see, there's a re there's a pat, uh, Gene. I guess he's the one that put up that mailbox uh, to 
when it rotted. And like a stand? Hats on one end and me on the other. Okay. And they've got a place to slide a package, and he uses it, and we don't like it. Mm. Well, call the post office. Uh, uh, that's right. Uh, Pat brought one in to me the other day that was heavy. And uh, lo and behold, uh, I went out there one day, and there was one for her, and I thought, well, if it was that heavy, I can't get that in. Mm. And it wasn't. And she said it was a baby quilt from her sister-in-law, her, her, her grandbaby. But she said, Billy, this is ridiculous. This is too for me. See, I knew if I didn't call her and tell her that I got it, she'd think the postman put it there mm. on her bench. Mm -hmm. So it is it past ridiculous. Yeah. But they said I wouldn't pay anymore. That's what my lady told me. I'd be damn glad when she gets back because... No, we should report it. Yeah. That's right. That's all. Right. Nowadays, they love good shooting. <laughs> I know it. <coughs> or get mad not bringing your mail to you. I told Pat, I said, I don't quite know how to handle it. I think maybe approach him <coughs> and just say, you know, it's very dangerous for you to be leaving these packages. Could you please? And even if you don't want to make but one stop, you leave one and the other. It, one or the other of these houses. That'd be the best thing, because he probably doesn't know uh -huh. who he's leaving mail you know for. The reason I say that, he don't know me, because it was my other postman that knew me. Yeah. One retired after I'd been here 15 years, so oh, then this lady, she's the one nice one that drove up and asked me why didn't I... Well, she brought me something to sign, or, or a package or something, and she said, she went to leave and said, Ms. Arthur, why don't you have them put your mail out at the house? Anyway, you can call the post office and request that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's why she said it won't chew another penny. She said we get a little more, but that's not the reason I'm telling you that. Mm-hmm. <coughs> also, you don't have to walk that distance that's and across good, the street. A pretty good distance. It mm -hmm. is. It's not even just straight across. It's down the no, street. It's down the road, and of course, both dogs following me and cars whizzing. Mm -mm. And me scared to death that they'll get hit. No, you you need to call the post office and get that arranged. Yeah, or but I do like you thought about just go speak to the postman. I, I just thought that would be more fair, and if it were me, mm -hmm. uh, and like I believe he is a substitute, I'd rather him approach me rather than report me. Right. But he should have more common sense. No, they don't seem to have. He that. should, but. On the other hand, he doesn't know who you are. He doesn't know if you're... He doesn't. She did. A young couple that... Or something, or, or whoever. Yeah. He doesn't know who lives there. But he'll do that with my car sitting here, you know. So it means he does not know me. Mm -hmm. He's. Not, I've never seen him up right. I just know when the pickup is on is when this happens. And I think he's a sub. Yeah. <clears throat> well... Um, I guess we're going to go. And well, get baby, to... I filled y'all's ears up. I'll give y'all enough for one weekend. But <laughs> I love y'all. I, I got a sweet Valentine card from Kathleen, but as for talking with her, I haven't. No, I, I haven't. I think she and Kathy talk back and forth all the time in letters or email. Email. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, I, she asked me to call James because she he sounded very lonely, and I did. And that's another, we, we should pray for James. Mm -hmm. He's a lonely, lonely soul. And uh, that bothers me. In fact, I feel by my sister's children like, just about like I do my own. And if they're not all right, I'm not all together all right. Yeah. But I feel sorry for James. Yeah. Well, um, we'll be checking back with you. Well, baby, babies, I will. I'm so grateful for this phone call. And I will be talking to everybody has a fit over my pictures of uh, Emma. No. Oh, okay. I haven't given anybody any yet. Well, uh, Mark, I want Mark to send you. They sent pictures of her in her christening gown, and she looks like a little doll. She looks like a doll anyway. Angela picked these up last night and thought they were Kaylee. <laughs> She's got, they've both got that little chin. Uh-huh. But no, 
she, her eyes, her beautiful eyes, but blue. And they're still blue. And so. that blue, they'll stay blue. And that bubble, that bubble mouth. Yeah, <laughs> that was my favorite. Uh, it's just all, oh, she's in all. <laughs> well, somebody's trying to get me. Okay, well, we're going to go, and we love call. you. Call me again. Okay, bye. bye. bye.